we've seen a continuing increase in the research funding in the College of Applied Health Sciences. Whether it's done in our laboratories or in the community, the work that's being done has truly a national and even an international impact. We're excited to be able to share the groundbreaking work that's being done across a number of different research topics by the faculty at the College of Applied Health Sciences. Almost 60% of the people who survive a stroke are unable to walk independently in the community. So we are developing new therapies. We believe that integrating state-of-the-art technology using non-invasive brain stimulation with interventions that we know are effective, like physical therapy and walking training, will help more stroke survivors walk. And not only that, we would help them walk at a faster pace so that they can walk independently in the community. The main way that people lose weight is through daily calorie restriction, but people aren't really good at sticking to that because they feel deprived on a daily basis. So we found that with every other day dieting where people eat about 500 calories as a lunch on the fast day, and that's alternated with a day where people eat basically whatever they want. People lose anywhere between 10 to 30 pounds in about eight weeks and can actually maintain their weight loss. Along with that weight loss, they see a lot of benefits in heart disease risk parameters as well as diabetes risk parameters. Every healthcare visit in the U.S. gets assigned a diagnosis code. That whole system is transforming October 2015. We're going from 14,000 concepts to over 80,000 concepts. And it's not just more concepts, they've actually completely twisted the definitions. Due to the significant complexity of the transition, we developed a free online tool to help all providers see the complexity in order to help everyone mitigate the transition to save money and ultimately allow the healthcare system to move on to harder, more difficult challenges. There aren't very many evidence-based treatments that are out there for autism yet. But there are some, and those treatments are very expensive. So children from low-income minority backgrounds are less likely to be able to access those treatments. So we developed an intervention to address this. We use other parents that have children with autism to provide the intervention. They do home visits, and they deliver this material in the form of an interaction discussion. And they'll try to engage the parent in talking about their child. Really, the intervention is focused on an empowerment model. We're focused on closing the gap on who gets concrete treatment and services. People with disabilities, even though the Americans with Disabilities Act has been around for 25 years, are still reporting significant disparities in everyday life. Where they live, how they live, how they participate in the community, and access to employment. You can go to the census right now and you can get national data. We're going all the way down to the state and city levels. One of the key strategies we're using is we've developed an interactive accessible website where it's very easy for people to see the disparities that people with disabilities might be facing. We need the evidence that can actually show it to the funders, the policymakers, the governors, the mayors that can then do something about it. 33 percent of 70 million, that's the number of older adults annually that are expected to fall. And then of those falls, there's a proportional number of injuries. What we've tried to do is focus on what we call preventable falls. So what we have done is taken the approach that we could train older adults physically to perform the tasks associated with avoiding a fall. We have a special technology that we developed. UIC holds the patent. What we think we can do with the technology is reduce preventable falls by perhaps as much as 50%. I'm working on a full-length documentary film called Code of the Freaks. And it's a film that shows how, from the earliest days of film to the present, People with disabilities have been represented in very specific, formulaic ways. So we want people to be able to think critically about why is disability portrayed this way? How might it be portrayed differently? And perhaps consider that our actual lives are a lot more rich and interesting than what Hollywood shows us. Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in both men and women. So we're trying to uncover in middle adulthood changes that might occur in the circulation that can be predictive of developing cardiovascular disease later in life. We're looking at blood vessel function with ultrasonography and looking at biopsies to look at small blood vessel function and molecular markers that might be changing. Our goal is to identify individuals that might be at risk for cardiovascular disease later in adulthood at an earlier time point. Much of our work is focused on health outcomes in disadvantaged populations, understanding the challenges families face to eating healthy. The science is showing that individuals may be knowledgeable 
about nutrition, but if they're living in environments that are not supportive of healthy behaviors, then people can't sustain those behaviors. So our work is to generate evidence. What happens when you bring in a grocery store or you improve a corner store? We might develop solutions in one community or in one state, but the long-term goal is to determine how can these programs or policies help improve the health of the population nationally. Science is supposed to change the lives of people. We want to make sure that whatever we know here can go right out and impact communities.